Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Today we're doing a three for one. Three things I love to do on this channel all in one video. Number one, we're going to be talking about the Godot game engine. Number two, we're going to talk about a little project that could use a little bit more exposure. And number three, I'm going to try to make your ears bleed. So we got a three for one and I love that. So what we're looking at today is a little extension for the Godot game engine that enables you to dynamically create sound effects. This is based off of S SFXR. Now this is a project that has been around forever. It was created for a Ludum Dare going way back to 2007 you've probably been exposed to this tool or one of the tools inspired by it such as chip tone or bfxr it's a simple sound effect generator if you need to make 8-bit style sound effects simply for your game that's what sfxr was all about now this one again has been around for ages there are a number of more modern more friendly ports to play with but if you're using the godot game engine well there is now godot sfxr and this is basically an implementation of sfxr specifically ported from jssfxr um, that's very hard to say repeatedly by the way uh, that enables you to do dynamic sound effects on the fly in the the Godot game engine. It's a very cool system and it's actually quite easy to work with. By the way, it is also an open source project available under the MIT source code license. It was recently published about four or five days back. And yeah, we're going to jump in and show you how to go ahead and use these sound effects in the Godot game engine. The first thing you're going to do is have to grab the library. For now, it has not been accepted to the asset library yet. So what you're going to have to do is clone it. So just come on in here, uh, grab the uh, the repository and do a git clone of that. I've already done that uh, and I've actually three quarters of the way through creating a project. So I'm gonna create the project that we're gonna work with like so. And once that is created, what we need to do, clone our repository, which is available right here, and just grab the add-ons directory from that one and go into your newly created project and paste it in. There we go. So now we have that in our project. We're going to head back over to Godot. And what you will see here is we now have the add-ons folder. With that enabled, we just come up to Project, Project Settings, Plugins. I don't know why they use add-ons as the terminology and then plugins here in the user interface. That's always struck me as weird. And if you're from the Godot team, there's a lack of consistency in that logic. But anyways, go ahead and enable that one like so. So G Godot SFXR is now enabled. And yeah, let's go ahead and show you how this works. So this is implemented as a node in Godot. We're just going to go ahead and create a simple 2D scene. And we're going to create a button in our scene. This is going to be where all of the magic happens. We're just going to create a standard button like so, and let's make it a little bit bigger, like so, position it somewhere, and give it some text. So we're gonna call this one, click me, Alice. All right, there we go. So there is our button in place, and now with that button selected, I'm gonna add a child node to it of type SFXR stream player, like so. Just add that guy in. Now you're gonna notice there is a script attached to this guy, uh, like this. And now what we can do is using this guy, let's go back over to our thing, we can now start creating sound effects on the fly. There's really one value you need to know about and then a bunch of cool to know. So this is a standard audio stream player. It's extended from that. Uh, so you can turn on auto play and you can change the volume and the pitch. You can hook it up to the standard audio buses and add all the, the typical special effects that you wish to add on top of here. But what you want to do is come on in here to actions, pick a generator and pick the kind of sound you want to make. So let's say, for example, you want to make a laser. We just go there, create a laser. And if you want it to play automatically, and that is that. That's really all that it takes. And now if we want to go ahead and use this guy in code, we can come back here. So let's go ahead. We'll save our scene. All right, save our scene like so. And now let's go ahead and go to this guy. Uh, we'll add a script to him like so. So our button now has a script attached to it. We're good to go. Now we're going to go back here to our button. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Come on, button. Come on. There we go. All right. So there our button is selected like so. I'm going to go on over here and then we'll do a button pressed event and we'll attach it to the button itself. Sure. Good thing to go. And now we'll put our code logic in here. So the simplest way to do, since it's a child, just do SFXR stream player and then we do a play SFX. That's it. So we'll go ahead. We'll run our scene. Yeah. Curve use the current. And now. Do, do, do. And yeah, that's it. That's all that's uh, required to use this one. So obviously, if you wanted to switch up your sound effects, you could come on back over here and we could switch that out instead to say an explosion or uh, synth. Oh, that didn't do anything. Or a mutator. Hmm. Come on, play. Hmm. 
All right, let's do a power up. All right, so there, we got a now power up sign. We'll go ahead, we'll play that sound out now. And click. All right, there we go. So we're getting a different effect every time. So we're getting a changed out the generator that we're using at that point. Now you do have control over all those things. So if you want to flange it, for example, uh, you can put a flanger on that guy like so. And so you can see, you can really kind of easily create these dynamic sound effects directly inside of the Gajo game engine. Now, what you can also do here, and I don't think you're supposed to because they're underscored methods, but you're going to notice here, there are a number of properties being applied here, including, of course, this um, generator property. So let's say we want to randomly create a sound, or you want to create a sound using a very specific, you want to create an explosion randomly on the fly or something. What we're going to do is add some horribly hacky code, which we probably shouldn't do. Uh, but yeah, let's do that anyways. So we're going to come over here to our, where I've already written the code. And then let's head on back over to uh, the oh, game engine once I find you. There we go. And we'll head back to our button. And we will edit the code on our button. And instead of just playing the sound effect, what we're going to do... Well, let's detab you. So what we've got here is basically we're going to the globals that are being set for the FSXR and getting all of the various different preset keys. This is your um, basically the logic that is populating this generator list right here. So the variety of different options right there. Uh, we're basically getting them. You can see there, so all of them, we're doing a random between zero and the last one in that array. So pick a random value out of it. Uh, we're going to set that as the generator property for our sound. And then we're going to go ahead and play our sound effect. And what you're going to find now is... Each time, we're getting a completely random sound effect out of it. So obviously you can see here, you could programmatic, programmatically set your sounds as well. You don't have to be created, uh, pre-created like this, or you could also um, set up a bunch of these things, you know, one for explosion, one for, um, you know, basically one for each type of generator you want to use and just change out the values there or randomize things or however you wish to do it. Um, or you can, again, completely random out a sound effect. Now, this this action, what we're doing right here, isn't really that usable in most cases because you're not going to want to randomly play a random type of sound. But it shows you the capabilities of what you can do here. And then once again, this is using the standard audio bus. So you can pass this along um, any of the normal audio bus functionality you want to work with uh, will be available here. So if we go down here to the audio, your audio buses are set up. You can chain in audio buses. Again, different topic for a different day. But if, say, if I wanted to add um, reverb to our effect, we can add reverb in and it will pass through the bus. So I could actually come in here and say, okay, pass that through our new bus. We will now have reverb. Um, now, since we're getting a random sound doing a random thing, a random effect, you're not going to hear the effect of that reverb from the bus. But all I'm trying to show you here is that this uses the standard uh, Godot way of doing audio effects. So you can just incorporate it into your existing pipeline. So if you want to have completely randomized 8-bit sounding sounds in your game, uh, you can do that now. Or obviously, if you're creating a tool, which is becoming more and more common with the Godot engine, uh, this is another option for you. So it's really kind of a cool project there. Basically, they implemented SS SFXR inside of the Godot game engine. So again, you could use this, you could create uh, specifically one for explosions, um, you know, and you could create multiple stream players for multiple different effects. Uh, you could save them out as a resource, or as you saw here, you can actually um, dynamically set up the properties as you wish and go from there. Now, again, this isn't probably the intended way of doing it, as you can see from that underscore before the word set. Uh, but as you can see, it also works perfectly. So in my theory, if it works, it's right. <laughs> uh, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is SFXR for uh, the Godot Game Engine. Once again, uh, MIT open source license, and that's pretty cool. Uh, so this is uh, to to Tomeru, uh, same name on um, Twitter, by the way. So if you want to jump in and say hey to him, uh, that is his Twitter handle as well. Very cool project on the whole. SSXR, like I said, it's been around for ages. Um, and that's what it's for, creating simple sound effects. And through this project, through uh, the SSX, uh, Godot SS. SFXR project, uh, you can now generate those sound effects directly inside the editor or inside of your code. Pretty cool project on the whole. Uh, definitely one I would recommend you check out if you are using Godot and this sounds handy to you. Again, it's a simple clone, MIT license. Use it however you want. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.